Good morning. I uh, just wanted to make a quick video this morning uh, about this uh, laser test that I just heard about. Um, very impressive uh, video here. Um, very impressive uh, equipment being uh, proposed to be used, and uh, it's quite it's quite uh, interesting actually. So I wanted to offer a couple of things that uh, stuck out to me. Uh, this part here, I'll just play this part. That's it. Would this break the world record? If everything goes as we expect, this experiment will actually set the world record for the longest distance laser targeting in history and be verified by a third party, unlike the moon distance laser targeting done by NASA. How can you see the laser beam from the... Let's play that again. Um, I just want to make sure I, I'm hearing this Long right. Distances. Would this break the world record? If everything goes as we expect, this experiment will actually set the world record for the longest distance laser targeting in history. Okay. Um, I'm not so sure about that. I, I'm aware of one test that is definitely longer than this one. I wouldn't even call it a test. It's an actual survey using laser. And uh, let me just show you that first. You can download this report. It's linked in the description to this video. And this was done, the actual survey took place in 1977. And this, uh, this report discusses the device used and uh, all of its uh, details, etc. I downloaded the report a couple years ago and um, took the observations. Actually, I did more than that. Let me just show you this little uh, PowerPoint uh, that I made. This is the scheme of the trilateral of the uh, lateral radial uh, lines that were measured. Uh, the longest one was around 93k, and I made a field trip down to the National Geodetic Survey and uh, pulled. They pulled out the folder for me of the McDonald Observatory. Uh, survey and these are the field books and I made copies of the field books and you know these are some of the pictures which I will show you I got these pictures by email from Charlie Glover himself a uh, friend and mentor to me who has since uh, passed away, but uh, these are the kinds of impressive projects that uh, Charlie and company worked on back in those days. You can see these are all like uh, Polaroid <laughs> photos. And uh, you can see the extent they went to to construct the uh, observation stations. These are the, the reflectors used to send the light back to the, uh, the laser. Uh, granted, they're doing something different than the test proposed at, uh, in Hungary. They're actually measuring the distances and, uh, and the zenith angles. So, you know, what you're seeing are uh, reciprocal zenith angle measurements taking place and, and this is the laser that was being used, called Big Red. And there's a little bit of uh, specifications on, on that instrument. So back to this PowerPoint. Um, so what they're doing is, on this radial line scheme, not only are they measuring the distances, but they're measuring the uh, zenith angles, that is, the vertical angles, at both ends of the line, and they're doing it simultaneously. So you have a, a T3 theodolite, high-precision T3, which is a 0.2-second direct reading instrument, and they're measuring these angles simultaneously toward each other from each end of the line and continuously recording the temperature, pressure, and humidity uh, along the line. Uh, 
And so I took the observations that are recorded in the report and reconstructed that project. And the interest that I have is our ability to uh, measure the inclination of the plumb lines at each end of the line. And so I found what those were for each of these lines. And these are the uh, published uh, geodetic latitude and longitudes of each of these stations that you can get. They're publicly available. You can download them here. And just looking at one of the lines, the longest one, one to four, we find that the geodetic arc inverse between these published positions is around 50 minutes. Just showing you here what was measured in the field is is recorded here. <clears throat> so the uh, the sum of the zenith angles on these distances is far greater than 180 degrees, which would indicate the amount of tilt that exists between the plumb lines uh, at each end of the line. And that's the purpose of that little uh, PowerPoint. Now, <clears throat> So if there are longer tests, I'm not sure where, why you think this is the longest test, but you know, I, I commend you doing this test. This is great. I, I, I would love to be there for this. It's really cool. But I'm going to suggest that you, um, you do a couple more things. I think you should download these reports that I've linked here in my little video here and get the geodetic control that uh, exists around that lake and you should make some ties to that control. There's another one, this one. Okay, so there are control points near to and around the lake, but the, there is densification too. There are more points. These are the high order, uh, the first order ones. You should definitely, it doesn't have to happen now. You don't have to do it um, before the test, but you should set permanent markers that you can come back to and recover them uh, and tie those markers to this geodetic control. Let's see. Here's, here's all the leveling marks. There's a lot of control around this uh, lake. You should tie your marks to that. If not, if you can't find one to occupy itself, then, then set your own marks and make ties to the control. Why? Well, uh, you're out there trying to prove whether or not the Earth is curved or flat. If the Earth is curved, you will be able to replicate the values on this published control. If you come up with different results, you're going to be able to show your differences. Uh, and these control markers will serve as a third party. You did mention a third party in your uh, video. And uh, this, in a way, is a third party that represents that the Earth is curved. Uh, obviously, you know, geodetic control. If you inverse the differences between latitudes and longitudes at each station, you're going to get the delta arc between those points. So you should definitely tie to these. If you ignore these and do your test, if you ignore this control out here that's readily available, um, I, I think it makes your test, uh, it diminishes the value of your test. If you make ties to the control, it um, it shows you've gone to that additional effort, and it's not a huge effort to add to your test. Like I said, you could do it later. It doesn't have to happen. I know you're very busy, probably, very busy getting your test underway, so don't think you need to do this first. You can do it afterward, but you should be able to show the differences or agreement. That, you know, that's the, that's the part, purpose of your test. So, anyway... I think that's all I had to say this morning about your test, and best of luck to you with it. I think it's, uh, it's a good thing to do.
uh, sign off here. Take care.